All right, so let's look in Google Maps. We're going to go to Algiers. So Algiers is the, obviously the capital of Algeria. We're going to click on it. So here's this does quick photos of it from Google Maps. On the guy, it was actually pretty. So Algiers, it's actually I think is a pretty, a oh. pretty, pretty country uh, city to visit. Yeah, for sure. Um, Wait, what's that? What's that? Go back up. That, that thing. What's that? I don't monument. Know. It's the monument of the martyr. It's like the Arc de Triomphe. Yeah, uh, one of their monuments to feel good about themselves. They have a nice church. Uh, I mean, uh, Algeria, like Algeria and Tunisia, Morocco. They, they were a Christian country before. Before. Um, oh, it's actually very, very pretty. Yeah, yeah. the city and the, the beaches. The city center. So. Let's do. Uh, let's go Google. Google, random place. So this is the downtown area. Uh, I mean, clearly, it's the downtown. Usually, the downtown of the capital is always going to be pretty well developed. It, I, don't, it, I don't know if you guys remember Tunisia from much, but it looks a lot like Tunisia. I do. It can't. Yeah, be I do. Exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. I guess in front of some some like cool buildings. Yeah. So that's. Uh, Ooh, you could drop us ne next to the Great Mosque. Ooh. Some random, random hammam. Steal something. All right, you guys know what a hammam is, right? That's uh, where they watch you. What's the call? Art gallery. Uh, no, hammams are public baths. Yeah, they give you like a massage kind of. Yeah, they give you a good massage. In fact, you went to one. You went to a couple of one. One in Tunisia, one in France. It's actually pretty nice. Yeah, so, I don't know Tunisia too. A public, so you don't pay. No, you pay. And you pay them. But it's just a lot of massage people working together. It depends. Each one's a little bit different. You get like either a sauna or you get go get a massage. This is their mosque, I guess. Bit too big ass mosque. Yeah, it is big as shit. Okay. Their beaches are not known to be like the Tunisian beaches, but yes, here's some rocky. They're not uh, known for the beaches. Beach? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they have beaches somewhere, but they're not really known for it. Well, it looks like it looks like Algiers just spreads throughout the entire north. No, this this oh no. This this uh, is Algiers. Okay. Yeah. yeah these oh, are uh, cities. So I mean oh, almost, oh, wait, show us how big Algeria is oh, anyway. Okay. Algeria is hey, huge. Ooh, damn. Now but of course, uh clearly most of Algeria is come like complete Sahara Desert. So so basically, the bottom two thirds is desert. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably bottom maybe three four or three fourths, if not. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. So so everything is basically up next to the coast. Yes, almost the whole. Green. Yep. I mean, look at those roads. So this is like yeah. Yeah. This is one. I think one of the bigger cities oh, down shit, south. Yeah. Oh <laughs> hell no! That is desert, yeah. <laughs> Hell no! Nah. We nobody is coming out there. <laughs> so, oh, there's camels. I've never seen a camel in real life before. Uh, when you go to Tunisia, you'll see them, I guess. <laughs> Just walking by. Well, not yeah, you will. Look. Not it depends where you are. I want to ride one. The, the the tourists love them, so you'll see them a lot. So that's oh, yeah. So. That that town is called Inshallah. Mm -hmm. Inshallah, yeah, it's actually funny. <laughs> Hopefully you'll live through there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, they got they definitely got a big. Uh, their uh, those desert towns are probably rough places to live, um, or interesting places to live. I guess we'll another. So, that's. Wow. Yeah. No, I would not want to be out there. So yeah, they've got a pretty cool park that. Uh, so it's very. Uh, it can be very. Um, they, they, Wait, check out Constantine. Yeah, Constantine. We'll go to Constantine in a second. There's two. So if you do visit uh, Algeria, there's three main cities to visit. Clearly, they do have those uh, tours to take you to the desert. I mean, that would be interesting. I think Tunisia probably does it better because they're more used to it and they have more choices. But Algeria, I mean, definitely go in the wilderness to Algeria. Uh, but they definitely they don't have the tourist in this infrastructure as Tunisia does or Morocco does. Uh, so, but Algiers, look, so go look at Algiers. Things if you do go to Algiers, what are the, what's there to see and do? Things to do. There, they have the actually I saw this one, the the King's Palace, which is just a pretty palace. You can go visit there. Interesting things to see. I like the I like these history 
history things. They have uh, the Bardo National Prehistoric Museum, which is, uh, seems to be a really cool museum. So it shows you a little about North African uh, life and culture. Uh, their city center is, per is actually quite pretty. Botanical gardens, like it's actually really well maintained. Um, I I think you, there's a few. And yeah, that looks really really good. They clearly have a lot of historical museums down downtown, mosques, uh, cool architecture. It's it'll be an, it'll be a nice few days trip in, in those years. I mean, I guess you just go through like North Africa, you know, just yeah. maybe like a day or two in each country. They have a fortress. Uh, they have a fortress in Iran, which is actually uh, they got a, like a park. That's a little bit outside. There's a uh, like a desert park. This is their national park, not too far from Algiers. So that'll be interesting little walk around the, the desert. So they're just yeah. like all camping out, just right there. The, yeah. the next picture. I don't know what might have been for some kind of a. All right now, my my question is how how safe are these places? At the moment, it's really safe. The ter the war is finished. So. Yeah, but I mean, like, what what's their crime level? Is it like can you can you go out into you know this national park and camp and and you know. Be comfortable without yeah. having to worry about people robbing you or murdering you or raping you in the woods. Yeah, it's not the crime is not significant. But I mean, it's not significant. It's not something you should be more worried there than you should be here. Um, okay. The next big one is uh, Constantine. So I mean, the, the other city in like a big city is Iran. But I mean, the only really thing I saw interesting in Iran is uh, they have a um, they have a pretty cool fortress. I don't know if it's really worth the drive up there. Looks well, like some Assassin's Creed. So this is Oran. This is a, a oh, really cool looking city. Yeah. So it's a little bit off. I mean, if you have someone with unlimited amount of time and money, it's definitely worth a visit. I mean, but clearly, if you, I mean, a week, if you have like a short time, and I don't know if it's really worth the the distance to get, get to just go there, because that's really all I saw in that city. But it was still pretty cool. Next place is and the other city I actually did think was pretty cool was Constantine. So we're gonna go visit, look at that now. Uh, Wait, so they speak what an Algerian dialect? Yeah, they speak uh, Arabic, and uh, I mean, yeah. there's, 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 it's similar to Tunisia. I think if I okay, think like, I like Tunisians can speak with them. I mean, they speak with them Arabic if they need to, but uh, they can definitely even with their dialect they'll understand each other. Okay. So next one is uh, Constantine. So it's a little bit in, but it seems uh, there's a pretty cool bridge. So there's a, a bridge you walk across. And, uh, on, and just, you see the... Oh, well, well, that was a cool one. Yeah. The lights. So you walk across through, the, through this bridge. There's two bridges. Oh, there's another bridge right here. <laughs> so they got two pretty cool bridges that you can. Okay, yeah, this is more of a people bridge. You can just walk across this bridge from one side to the next. And it's a pretty city. I mean, so uh, this is. Let's so zoom in this area. This is Constantine. Yep. On some random store or coffee. Shop <laughs> down the. I don't know. I wouldn't. Uh, do you say that's pretty? No, this one's pretty run down. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the monument. The monument. Monument of War. Uh, I thought no, this was the bridge. Actually, I was going to try. There's another suspended. They have, they're known for these bridges. So you could do cliff diving. Well, I just walk and just uh, see the scenes. I'm not cliff diving. I'm base jumping. There's the monument of of, of the dead or more. Well, that's actually pretty cool. Wow, that looks dangerous. <laughs> Let's put put your house on a cliff. <laughs> Shit. Hope you have insurance. So it's, pre it's a pretty unique city that how they built it on a mountain. I don't think we're really giving it justice here by just to show these pictures, but there's I think a lot to see. Okay, okay. Is it Notre Dame or Notre Dame? I've never figured that out. Uh, uh, I say Dame. Dame is like the American way. Dame is. Uh, 
Uh, uh, so Notre Dame is the right way then. I assume so. Here's pictures of Constant. They have the fortress right at the end of the bridge. And it's very picturesque. Cool museums. It's, it's very different uh, from the rest of Algeria. Pretty, pretty different from the rest of Algeria. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, if I would go to Algeria, uh, that's a place I would definitely visit. Uh, you would go to Constantine over Algiers? I'm pretty sold on Algiers. Well, I think I, you have to go Algiers first. Because, I mean, basically even by flight. But then also, I'd like to go see that park and then go see Constantine. And then you know what? You're only a hop and skip away. You might as well just continue to Tunisia at that point. So. Uh, yeah, true. Can you, is sure. there like a shuttle or, or something that'll take you across, you know, st like state lines, whatever? No, countries? I'm pretty Why? sure there's buses. Uh, I, I'll okay. be surprised if there isn't. Do they have open borders, these countries? They just let people go in and out? No, it's not. I mean, it's op open that they have borders you can go through. I mean, you have to go through customs. Okay. <laughs> you don't just walk to the other it's, side. Yeah, it's not like the EU Dude, where like, you go from Spain to France. Our Texas Mexico border, you, you, it's just dirt, bro. You just drive across it. Which country? Texas and Mexico. Um, I. It's not easy. It's not as easy as you're making it sound to be. Are you sure, bro? I feel like I feel like it's just desert half of it. You could just go right well, across. There's lots of walls in most places. Uh, I mean, not in many places. Walls and fences. And where there's, there's no fences, it's usually there's not fence because it's so remote and and so difficult to cross through. It's they didn't feel like uh, there's no real point to do a fence. I mean, clearly, like uh, the Trump thing was build a wall all across it. And yeah. other places like, well, it's so remote, we can't even, like, if someone makes a hole in this fence, we won't even know about it for a long time, so what's the point? So there's... <laughs> yeah. So there's... Well, that's where everybody's getting in. Well, not many... Most people get in uh, through the ports of entries, and there's other ways to get in than, uh -huh. than the desert marches of death. But uh, people do go through that way, and they and a lot of people die. In safer ways, there's tunnels, but people... There's tunnels that they come up and get you through. Uh, there's a lot of ways uh, other, other other than the death march the death march I feel is like the, the poor poor man's such way yeah you just pay coyote and you go so that's Algeria what do you guys uh, think of Algeria I mean it's not it had a few tragic events uh, for the uh, civil war I forgot to talk about a hundred like 150,000 people died in the in the Algerian mm -hmm. civil war so less than the re than the uh, revolutionary war against uh, France but still pretty significant I'd rather Algeria fare better than Albania. I just, I know Albania is in a better place right now, but Algeria has more potential, so I hope they actually use it and don't squander it. Yeah. That's my feeling on it. I'd rather, I don't know which I'd rather visit. They're both cool. They both have a lot. I think, but, uh, I think Albania has little bit more to offer though because you got you got beaches and you got stuff to do Algeria has p pretty things to see but it, that's pretty much it there's no you can't there's no like a nightlife or yeah you know, I think Algeria it's definitely not as as good as Albania but yeah. I mean it's it's livable for sure it's definitely livable it's not it's not Afghanistan yeah, uh, yeah it, mm -hmm. you can go there you can live you're good mm-hmm um, it's, okay. it's, it's stable. Size, yeah, it's stable. It's livable. If oil prices goes to four dollars, it'll, it'll start booming again. <laughs> you're you're right next to Europe. Honestly, if you know how to how to, you know, mm. use a boat, you could just go right over to Italy. I mean, they got ferry systems actually all hey. the time. Yeah. Do they? Yeah, they got ferry systems. But I feel like a, a ferry wouldn't wouldn't go to to like Spain or Italy. It would probably just be f like at Gibraltar. I'm pretty sure they'd go. I'm pretty sure they go quite a bit. I'm, I don't know. Really? I looked at Tunis, and Tunis goes a lot of places. So I point. bet. That, yeah, Tunis probably goes to Rome, to Athens. Yeah, I don't know if to Athens, but it does stuff. It does go to Rome. It goes Athens to Spain. is pretty north. I mean, Algiers is a bigger economic powerhouse. Uh, Athens country. is over there on the right, bro. All right, whatever. It's far, further away. To the east. Know. Athens to the east. 
Uh, I don't know. It's Central East, so I say North. But I don't know if it, uh, the ferry goes to Athens. Maybe I have no clue. It definitely goes to Rome. Goes to France. I mean, it goes to France, uh, Marseille. Definitely goes to Spain. Um, Algeria is a much bigger powerhouse. Definitely, they definitely should have a ferry to France because lots of Algerians live in France. Um, yeah, uh, Marseille is a. So, so zoom out. Where is France exactly? Uh, right there, right above. Yeah, so France is right. I know, but, but where would it land? Where's Normandy? Normandy's on the other side. God damn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So a lot of, I mean, well, Algerians live all over France, but Marseille is like a big area where Arab, a lot of Arabs live, especially Algerians. Monaco is France? Monaco is a little shithole in France. Okay. Well, I mean shithole, meaning that they're a little tiny, part of France. They're a little tiny uh, country, uh, but they are uh, very rich. Yeah, the like thieving. Luxembourg. Yeah, one of those uh, thought, tax thought, havens. Yeah, Monaco is like a rich part of France. It's a tax haven. Ah, so that's where the rich people go. Yeah. It's the Andorra. Yeah, which we're gonna talk about Andorra next week, though. Andorra's fucking. That's tiny, dude. Why doesn't somebody just take that over? <laughs> we'll talk about why someone doesn't take it over. It actually has a very interesting story. We'll we'll find out next week. Dude, somebody should smash that like the little cockroach that it is. <laughs> well, I'm already Maybe smashed Monaco. Right 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 so, we'll, yeah, I'll go. I'll go through Andorra next week. Dude, what? It's right there between Spain and France. Oh, dude! It, if I was one of them, I would be like, "If you don't kill them, we're gonna kill them." <laughs> it has interesting yeah. history. Um, not like it's not I mean, a super. It's not. I'm it's, excited to learn about it, but I mean, yeah. they, they're gonna get taken over at some point. Like they have no means of expanding. Uh, they're the, they became a tax haven right now. So that's don't, don't don't spoil stuff. Let's let's. Make yeah. It. Right. Well, you could. Hint, hint. All these little countries in Europe, that's where all the people try to hide their money. <laughs> <laughs> all the tiny little countries? Yeah, well, that's what in Europe, that's yeah, what rich people like to do. I don't know about San Marino. We'll find more about them there. So they're the Delaware of uh, the Europe? Yeah, yeah. Stupid tax havens. What's the one the Swiss, Swiss banks? banks? Yeah, Swiss banks because they're very generous to, uh, they don't have any ethics. Like, we don't care how you got that money. Killed a million people for it. We're okay. Bring your money to Switzerland. No questions asked. <laughs> I can't wait to learn about the Nordic countries. We're going. We're going through them. So basically, where we're at now, uh, we got through Algeria, which I thought was pretty cool. We did three pretty diverse countries. Next one's Andorra. We're also going to do Antigua. It's another small one. It's a little island nation here. I don't know which. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, and the next. It's, that one's a short one, very short one. And the next big one is Angola, which is uh, down here. Angola. Ang- yep. Oh, next to Zambia. Mm. It's uh, very different. I think it's pretty cool because it's very different from what we've been... Uh, yeah. We've mostly about. been doing like Arab countries, pretty much, and Middle Eastern countries. Well, we only did three, so one... <laughs> <laughs> True. Two of the three. The two. Fit. Well, no, all three of them are pretty. They're, I mean, they're about the same. I think you mean Muslim countries. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think it's 50% Muslim. Uh, so 55. We all look the same, though. But it's never. Uh, I, I think, like, uh, in in Albania, though, it's not. Um, <laughs> Islam did not play a, a strong role in their, uh, in their post colonial post development in the recent in this century did not play, play any role thank god a, or should I say thank Allah yeah there it was not a thing I mean clearly today from everything I read about Albania they have, their issues are more ideological and economical uh, and their politicians act like babies more than <laughs> more than there's does not seem to be any religious like you fucking orthodox Christians join the Catholics or Catholics damn you Muslim oppressors and, from what I've seen, that does not seem to be a case. So that's good. Good, good on you, Albania. Religious uh, freedom. I, I, I mean, I guess in the beginning, they the communists were like, all oh, these religions are stupid. Enough of this. But then, at this moment, it seems that they're all living in peace. And re- so religions can coexist. It's not impossible. It's only an issue if you I make always, it an issue. I only see that coexist, but I don't really know what it's talking about. If it's is a religion, is a race, is it everything? What you, I'm sorry. What do you mean? That coexist bumper sticker. You've never uh, seen those. Yeah, I think it's like religion. I mean, it's like all religions and races coexist. You don't. The world is big enough, big enough for all of us to exist. 
Yeah, but I, I feel like the, the type of person to get that bumper sticker and put it on is probably religious himself or something. I don't think so. Really? Like, like why put in effort to buy that bumper sticker? I don't know. Really saw that and thought it was nice to tell people to live in peace and harmony. I, I feel like if you're saying that, then you're causing part of the trouble yourself. To coexist? <laughs> yes. I feel like most people who just want things neutral or whatever are just keep to themselves type thing and not the ones to, to say something. I don't know what the hell you're talking Does anybody know what he's talking about? Um, no, it's like the type of person to buy, to, to put up a political sign of vote this person or whatever, I support this person. It's like they want to share it with other people. Not really, I don't think, to spread a message, but just kind of to identify. So it's saying like agnostic people are less completely uncaring of the world around them? Like, eh. No, they, they want to feel like they belong to a group or something, you know? I, don't, I, I mean, I don't know who put... It's possible those Christians do they put those... Like, hey, I'm on this team. You know, I'm with, I'm with these guys. So, I don't I, know how to really explain it. Okay, it's, it's probably... I'm probably wrong, but... I think there's diverse reasons people put that bit bumper sticker. I don't know. Find a person with that bumper sticker and ask them their, about their religion. Maybe do a study up on this. I, I'm just assuming someone saw the bumper sticker, thought it was a nice message, and put it on. That's about it. I don't think there's much to it. There's always an agenda, okay? It's like <laughs> the people who, who show all how many family members they have on their car, the dog, and the, and the little baby, and all that stuff. It's like, who cares about that? Why are you showing us? I like the ones where they have the dinosaurs eating their children or something like that. Ah, this is what I think about this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one. I want to see that. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm, I think it's more for them to say, hey, look, this. I'm proud of my family. I don't have a bumper sticker. Right. That seems like too much hassle. And I hate the ones that my student went to hear. It's like... That's for okay. the kid. It's not for the... It's so you put it there so you tell the kid that you're proud of them. That's the point of it. Or you just tell your kid yourself uh, in person. It makes a stronger message. It's like, I, <laughs> I am willing to deface my car with this ugly ass sticker just to show how proud I am of you. That's a strong message. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. I, I can see. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's interesting. Uh, so also, like a thing to point out, how like a France was well, super green and Algeria is not. When you actually just consider the green area, uh, Algeria is much smaller than France. So that's how it showed how they were so much. E that's how it shows how they were easily able to conquer them. At that time, you actually did need to have that green to actually have a population, uh, any sizable population. So the green is uh, is vegetation, uh, arable land. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's like a little unfair. Literally all of Europe is just green. Well, that's why Europe kicked uh, kicked pretty much the world's ass for the last... Uh... Well, all right, well, we can do it quick. The best is to be light green. That light green is good. The dark green is a little... means it's forest, so it's a little hard. Uh, Topography. That's yeah. the word. Topography. Topography. So the United States had it pretty good, especially on the east. We're lucky we started the east and not in the west. Uh, yeah. so Central America... The tropics are really difficult because the forests are very bad. They're very once you cut them down, they never grow back. So it's a bit. So you once you cut wood, um, you can't use that wood anymore, and they're and they're not really very good quality wood too. So um, so it, so it doesn't come back if you cut it down, and you sh it, cutting it down kind of sucks stick. Yeah, so, they're not uh, cutting down to to use the wood. They're cutting it down to have more space to build shit. Yeah. So that's an issue for central, all these, these the damn rainforest, uh, they don't provide good quality wood and they don't grow back. So it's like in America, in the Eastern United States, in Europe, usually if you were smart, you can just cut some forest at a time and uh, you can go around it and you can not overuse your wood. That's not an, uh, these uh, rainforest areas have that, don't have that big problem of once you cut the wood, it's pretty much, you can't reuse it. So it's a bitch. So that's why South America always kind of will have struggles. Africa, Africa's issue is, is it's extremely, the Sahara Desert completely isolated from the world. Uh, then there's this Ethiopian Rift, which, which they continue to isolate it. 
Uh, you have yeah, this- that's crazy. There's just like the tiny little bit of green on the northern bit of Africa that's like kind of got associated with yeah, like Europe, and then and then Africa. They're really separated, huh? It's extremely yeah. This forest was very hard. It keeps people separated. There's was before no real- there was technology. Like before there was technology, and people went went there by boat. Um, nobody went. Nobody traveled through the Sahara to find them down there. No, it was uh, all relationships were pretty much by boat. Sahara was a. Uh, ex- there would be Bedouin tribes that would move back and forth, and they would bring goods, but only at a limited level because Sahara is a, a death trap. It's very very difficult to go through. Um, Can you drive through it? No, you could, but it's dangerous. I mean, you get stuck. <laughs> Is it dangerous? <laughs> you can get stuck. You be you might die. So, um, yeah, you can drive through it now. But, get, far. No. but it also, I mean, if you have a phone or something, you can get help. So it, now nowadays, you can drive through the Sahara. There's actually a, a race they do it from uh, Senegal to Morocco. It goes through the desert. I think it's called the Senegal uh, to Morocco. Senegal, Senegal. It's right there. I'll play it. It's like in West Africa. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the only real place in Africa that was uh, that could have had a strong civilization, and they did for a little while, was uh, West Africa down here. But those, unfortunately, this, this is, it was just too isolated from the rest of the world to really build up a um, it's like a, a lasting thing. Yeah. Was that the one that had that that uh, king or whoever the the Mali? Yeah, Timbuktu, yeah. all that time. Yep. The most money and shit, yeah. yeah. So it was a good time. Well, for- Age is more isolated than than West Africa, right there, because you can kind of get to Europe real easy, but but yeah, Asia, it, you have to well, a lot it, of shit to get to Europe. Well, Asia uh, now at the time, you, uh, China was a continent on its own, was big enough to self develop, and they had sure. they had relationships with India, and India had relationships with Iran, well, Persia, and the Persians had was able to get so if there was a technology that happened in Egypt it would get to China in a hundred years it'll take a time but it'll get there you know so China and Egypt for most of civilization were connected not directly yeah. but indirectly uh, yeah like an interesting That's... interesting fact like a lapu there's uh the minerals like a lazul there's this blue mineral I forgot what it's called but it's made it's actually mined in Afghanistan and it was only mined in Afghanistan. You can find it in uh, from like 2500 BC. You can find that in China and in Egypt. So from around the same mines, the uh, Ch- Chinese merchants were buying the same minerals that uh, that would eventually get to Egypt. So there were so even though uh, they would not know anything about each other, they knew uh, there was enough technology that would s- slowly but surely make it from one side of uh, one side of uh, the world to the next. And eventually, the, they did teach the Greeks, and the t- Greeks eventually got civilization, and eventually the Romans got civilization, and that's how Europe started. So it took Europe for it took Europe for a while to really kick up. Um, so everyone knows that like China had, you know, fireworks first and some other things, but then like didn't they like discover gunpowder first, but Europe used it first? Yeah, th- something interesting about technology is it's not who discovers something here first it's who discovers something first and finds a and finds a purpose for it and finds a, a, a real reason to use it china did to put cannons and the first cannons were not good they sucked they were inefficient and it was probably not worth the chinese emperor's time to invest in these things because he had enough people hey there's a warring there's some guy who doesn't want to pay taxes I, I don't know. I got two million people. Let's send a million two of them to jump up that wall. I, I got three million to replace them once they're dead. You know. <laughs> so China did not have any real reason to invest in these uh, in cannons, uh, and they discovered cannons before the Europeans did. But the Europeans did have strong, strong uh, economic incentive to invest in cannons, and uh, so did the. I mean, so did the Turks and the. Uh, the actually, I mean, the Turks, the Ottoman Turks, were the first to really use them really really well and they're able to take a bonnie spice team with them so it was more of a if you you and you create something when you need something and i think we'll talk about turkey later but i think one reason why the turks fell is simply the europeans industrialized the turks were 
perfectly capable of industrializing at that time, but they just didn't because it just did not make economic sense in the short term. People live in the short term, and sometimes your short term actions benefit you in the long term, and sometimes they don't. So, so Ch China's emperors back then were always took like the Lord Farquaad stance on military might of like you know a lot of you guys are going to die, but that's a sacrifice I am going to have to make. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's just a uh, numbers thought it's complicated. You, it's complicated why things happen. Geography is basically the main reason. Technology is interesting, but it's a lot of it just how, how people, when people need it and how they, and why they create it. And it's only going to really be used if there's a market for it. If there's no market for this technology, it's not going to happen, even if someone discovered it or invented it.